Hey everyone, it's technology expert Burton Kelso here with another tech tip to help you get the most out of the technology in your life. Today we're talking about how to have a cyber safe school year. That's right, students of all ages, I shouldn't say all ages, five and above are headed back to school and regardless where they're going, whether it be elementary, middle school, high school, or even college, you need to take steps as a parent to make sure that your kid is cyber safe. There are a lot of threats out there and you need to make sure that your kid is aware of all of them that exist. So let's take a look at some tips to help them stay safe from the variety of threats that are going around. Now, the first thing that we have to think about when we are talking about being cyber safe is AI. And unfortunately, you can no longer turn a blind eye to AI. AI comes in many forms, meaning that it is there to help your students get more from technology, which is a good side. But the bad side is all of the fact that cyber criminals are using AI to, oh, what's the good word? Steal their information and to create threats using deep fakes and voice cloning in order to trick your student. So parents need to make sure that your kids are aware of some aspect of AI. And a lot of that includes just sitting down with your kids and making sure that they understand how to properly use it and that they also need to be aware of some of the cyber threats that go along with AI. So you can't turn a blind eye to it. You've got to introduce your students to it and you need to make sure that they are staying cyber safe from all the AI threats out there. Next is phishing and phishing is a major threat that can affect any student. There are a variety of phishing schemes that are going around and they are AI generated. So it's important that your students when receiving email or text messages can find out how to stay safe from phishing schemes. And there are several websites that they can go to in order to test their phishing skills or that you can take them to so that they'll know how not to get scammed by a phisher. Now, the first website is one by Google. Uh, phishing with phishingquiz.google.com is the website. You can go and you can take the quick quiz and it will set have you set up an account but it will allow you to go in and set up or show students how to fish so we can go ahead and uh, set up a fake email and here we go let's get started uh, here we go is this a phishing or is it a legitimate email so you kind of get an idea of how it works. So let's say this is phishing and it's gonna go, show me, it's correct, show me what the problem is. So it gives you tips and tricks to help your students stay safe from phishing schemes. Another website would be the Fishing Box website. So if we go to Fishing Box, you can go to fishingbox.com forward slash phishing test, hit start test, and then it will give you examples of what's going on. And this one here would be, I would say, phishing. And it's gonna say, oh my gosh. Let's see what the results are. I said it was, oh, they keep going through and it gives you uh, the, the, the results at the end of the quiz. So you can kind of go and play around and find out if your student knows how to stay safe from phishing. And then finally, there's a website called Sonic Wall Phishing Quiz. So let's go here. Uh, it gives you another place where you can take a quiz. You can make up a name and email like on Google, but then you can start the quiz and learn or find out if your student can stay safe from a variety of scams that are going around. Next tip would be to make sure that your student knows how to create strong passwords. This poor student here 
is looking nervous because it's like, oh man, I don't know if I've got a right password. But there are websites that you can go to in order to find out if you've got strong passwords. And that website would be Bitwarden's utility that allows you to create your own um, password generator. Now I've got to go, I had to find it. Now let's go to the site. So here's Bitwarden. So bitwarden.com forward slash password dash generator will allow you to go in and create your own passwords. But realistically, you need to look at start doing pass phrases. Now, obviously, the longer the password, it's going to take a longer period of time to do that. But as you can see, it, the shorter the password, the quicker it is for a criminal to crack that password. Now, the password generator allows you to go in and choose a passphrase, which will set up, well, basically a passphrase is a series of numbers and letters that create a strong passphrase. So, Angry Donkey 1950 or Chipper Turtle 2014. Those are examples of passphrases, but if you go to Bitwarden's site, you can choose a minimum of a three word passphrase and it will tell you just off of the strength of a passphrase. It's going to take centuries to crack that passphrase. Now you can go in with Bitwarden, capitalize some words, include a number. Doesn't let you do a special character, but use your imagination. As you can see, every form of a passphrase is going to take centuries to crack, which is why you need to in instruct your students to start using passphrases as opposed to passwords. Another thing is to make sure that your students understand that they need to find if their information has been leaked onto the dark web. Now there's a website called haveibeenpwned.com and I will bring that up here in a second where you can take a look and see if your email address has been leaked in a large scale data breach. The reason that you want to check that out is because large breaches like AT&T and NameFinder breach has leaked essentially everyone's social security number on the dark web. So using a website such as uh, Have I Been Pwned allows you to at least see if your email information on the dark web. So we can go ahead and put in an email address like my burtonkelso at gmail.com. Look to see if it's been pwned and it has. Uh, so essentially, if you've been pwned, just let you know that there's a data breach that uh, was from 2017 where email addresses, names, and passwords of mine or of this email account have been on the dark web. Now, I'm safe because I've already changed the password for that account, but if you notice that your email address has been pwned, then you want to make sure you do the same thing. Parents, the other thing you should probably do in this day to day and age of credit cards is maybe switch and give your car or kid a debit card and put a freeze on their credit unless you are in the prospect of looking for student loans or other purchases that you want to make for your kid. Younger kids, credit freeze is probably a great idea. Older kids, it depends on what your financial situation is and what you want them to have. Now next on the list would be backups. Kids need to back up their information, and most schools make that easy to do. Two best services students can use are Microsoft OneDrive and, of course, Google Drive to make sure that those backups are in place. So if something catastrophic happens, like a data breach that, or a computer failure, kids will be able to retrieve their backups with <clears throat> no problem. And then finally, you want to make sure that their um, their laptops aren't stolen but there's a way to make sure that that doesn't happen now there is a feature on all smart devices called find my which allows you to track a stolen smartphone or a computer and or even misplaced items if your kid has the um, oh what is a good word for that if they just don't I'm <laughs> sorry to laugh, but if they're just irresponsible, that's the term that I was trying to get out. 
But yeah, you can use Find My to find those devices and an added touch would be to get your child an Apple Watch to keep track of Apple devices because Find My will buzz the Apple Watch if a device is left behind. Or if you're a Samsung user, Find My device and a Samsung watch will help keep those items safe and sound rather than wind it up in the lost and found. How'd you like that joke? Um, but realistically, it is very important for parents to make sure that they're keeping up with their kids as far as their data safety and their cyber safety during the school year. Threats are always coming across, such as cyberbullying. We know of sextortion scams and uh, just AI deep fakes and voice cloning. So, but make sure that they stay cyber safe so that way you have peace of mind and know that your kids aren't introducing anything bad to your family. So with that said, if you've got comments or questions, leave it in the comment section below. Love to hear from you to find out if there's anything that I can do to help you stay or keep your students cyber safe. Also, if you like this video, be sure to like, share, and comment because I know that you know people out there that um, have issues with cyber stuff. Or I should say, what's the good word for that? Just anything tech. Because we all have those people out there that are like, I don't know technology. But well, there is a channel that can help you out. So with every video, my goal is to help people get more from their tech devices at home and at work. I love technology. I've read all the manuals. And I'm serious about making technology fun, safe, and easy to use for everyone. So take care of yourself and do many things to make you smile. And thanks for watching. I know I've got to get that outro going. Let's get it.